Welcome to the solutions video for the last three problems of your problem set that I gave you last class. Starting to take a look at this situation where we have two objects touching each other with a 50 newton force pushing on the leftmost object. When you're working in systems with multiple objects, what you really want to think about is uh, breaking it down into two categories of forces. First you want to think about the system and then you want to think about the individual object, so the three kilogram object and then the five kilogram object. Sometimes it's easiest to work with the individual objects first, sometimes it's easiest to work with the system. You'll kind of have to test it out and see which one is best, which one you have the information about. So in this case, if I wanted to know the acceleration of each object, the acceleration of this object is the same as the acceleration of this object, which is the acceleration of the entire system. So knowing that the net force on the system is equal to the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system, we know that this 50 newton force here is the only force that's pushing on the system that's going to cause it to accelerate. Because there is a normal force here and a normal force here, those are going to counteract our gravitational forces here and gravitational forces here, because this is a surface. So the result is that we know our net force is 50 newtons, and that's going to be accelerating both of these masses, so 8 kilograms of mass, and that leaves our acceleration of the system. So since we only have one unknown, it's pretty easy to solve. Our acceleration of the system then is going to be equal to 50 divided by 8, or 6.25 meters per second squared. Now the nice thing is that the acceleration of the system is then also the acceleration of each of these two objects. So now that we have their, their accelerations, we can find the rest of the information about them. If we take a look at free body diagrams for each of these objects, the 3 kilogram object is going to have a 50 newton force going to the right, and it will have what I call the F5 here, which is the force from the 5 kilogram object. It also has these somewhat trivial, at this point, normal forces and gravitational forces. So Fg3 and Fn3. The 5 kilogram object has a normal force here, Fn5, a gravitational force here, Fg5, and then also it has this F3 force right here. Knowing that, and knowing that these forces are going to cancel out, and these forces are going to cancel out, we can now write net force expressions for the 3 and the 5 kilogram objects. So knowing that F net of the 3 is going to equal mass of the 3 times acceleration of the 3, we know that the acceleration of the 3 is 6.25, and the mass of the 3 is obviously 3, so that results in our net force being equal to 3 times 6.25, which is uh, 18.75. So that means that the net force on our 3 kilogram object is going to be 18.75 newtons. What is that force made up of? What is that net force made up of? A 50 newton force to the right and an F5 to the left. So I can say that uh, 50 newtons minus F5 is going to equal 18.75. So the result is that F5 will equal 31.25 newtons. So that's the force that the 5 kilogram object exerts onto the 3 kilogram object. Let's check how much the 3 exerts back onto the 5. This one's somewhat more straightforward since the F3 is the only force that's causing our 5 kilogram object to accelerate. So in the same fashion, F net 5 is equal to mass of 5 times acceleration of 5. So we have 5 times 6.25, or 31.25. And our F net of the 5 kilogram object is just this, F3. So the result, F3 equals 31.25 newtons. And if those two numbers look oddly similar, that's good. They are third law pairs, right? Because the 3 pushes on the 5 with the same amount that the 5 pushes on the 3. So it's good that we got the right numbers. A slightly more difficult problem. Remember I said in your practice problems you should switch this arrow so that it's pointing this way. Let's do the same thing that we did before. We're going to have the F net of the system first, and then we'll deal with the uh, 5 kilogram object, the 3 kilogram object, and then the 7 kilogram object. So for the system, 
F net is F1 because the internal forces to the system T1 and T2 are pulling this way on the 5 and this way on the 3 so they cancel each other out and T2 is pulling this way on the 3 and this way on the 2 so if we were to add up linearly the internal forces T1 and T2 would cancel out. The result is that we can kind of look at this system as an amorphous blob with all the stuff inside of it and write our net force for the system. So we know we have 45 newtons pulling to the right, or the left rather in this case. We have a normal force pulling up this way, F, F, F normal of the system, which is really just the combination of the normal forces between those three, and same thing, Fg of the system. So the result is F net of the system equals mass of the system times A of the system our F net is going to be just the 45 Newton force to the left and our mass of the system is 5 plus 3 plus 7 which is 15 kilograms times A of the system. The result is that our acceleration of the system is 3 meters per second squared. Now that we know that, we can write net force expressions and free body diagrams for each of our other objects. The 5 kilogram object, if we looked at its free body diagram, would have this 45 newton force this way. It would have T1 pulling this way. And then again, our somewhat trivial at this point normal force 5 and gravitational force 5. Our 3 kilogram object would have T1 pulling this way, T2 pulling this way, and again, Fn3 this way and Fg3 this way and the 7 kilogram object is a more simple free body diagram it just has T2 pulling to the left our normal force of the 7 pulling up and our gravitational force of the 7 pulling down so if we take a look F net of the 5 is going to equal mass of the 5 times acceleration of the 5 so our F net, let's do this in one step now, F net is going to be 45 minus T1, and that's going to equal 5 times our acceleration of the system, which we said was 3. If we solve this expression here, we get T1 is going to equal 30 newtons. Now it's tempting to use that information to figure out what T2 is, and that's a fine way. What I'm going to do is instead use this stuff over here to find what T2 is, and then use my 3 kilogram object to verify. So over here, I know that my F net of the 7 is equal to mass of the 7 times acceleration of the 7. So my F net of the 7 is T2, mass of the 7 is 7, acceleration of the 7 is 3. The result is T2 equals 21 newtons. Now with those things given here, let's double check that that works out. A 30 Newton force pulling to the left and a 21 Newton force pulling to the right should give us a resultant acceleration here of three meters per second. So let's write this out. F net on the three is gonna equal mass of the three times acceleration of the three. When we work that out, we get T1 minus T2 equals mass of the three, which is three, acceleration of the three, which is three. So 30 minus 21 equals 3 times 3. Let's double check. If you do your math correctly, 30 minus 21 is 9, and 9 does, in fact, equal 9. On to the very last problem. This one's a little more difficult, um, but when we take a look at it, we're going to see it's not that more difficult. So let's draw by free body diagrams for first the system. In the system, we have an F max pulling this way, and then we have a gravitational force and a normal force. The gravitational force here will be equal to 150 newtons approximately, and the normal force pushing up here on the 10 kilogram object will be equal to 150 newtons as well, because we're not accelerating into the system, or into the ground, rather. So if this is my static friction coefficient, that means that the maximum my static friction can be F static is going to be, will always be less than or equal to mu static times the normal force. Remember, friction is a reactive force. 
So the result is that the maximum my static friction can be, fx, fs max, will be equal to mu s times the normal force. Now this is the normal force on the 5 kilogram object. So that normal force is equal to its gravitational force. So this will be 0 0.5 times 50. So the maximum our friction force can be before it gives up is 25 newtons. Now what does that mean? If our friction force was 25 newtons, if our friction force was 25 newtons, that would mean that we would be countering essentially an acceleration equal to that 25 newtons divided by the mass of our object, right? F equals ma, or A equals F over m. Because if we're moving, if this maximum force pulling to the right pulls us to the right, that means that we're going to have a static friction force that pulls us to the right. And so the size of that static friction force will tell us the acceleration. So the maximum acceleration that the 5 kilogram object can experience before it gives way and starts to slide to the left is 5 meters per second squared. And so what does that mean? If we write a system net force expression, we know that F net of the system is going to equal mass of the system times A of the system. And so we're saying that since the mass of the system is 15 kilograms, the acceleration of the system can only be 5 before our 5 kilogram object on the, stop, on the top starts to slide. So the maximum that our F net can be before it starts to slide is 75 newtons. And this 75 newtons is made up strictly of this force to the right because this is a smooth surface. There's no force going to the left. So 75 newtons, and that thing stays on the top, greater than 75 newtons, and it starts to slide.